Hello, and welcome to Winging It. And once more, we are back with some more content from this Oceania expansion. And very excitingly, we've got our first online game here today, and we are going to be playing against none other than Tay Ray from the channel Tuck and Cash. So um, yeah, we're both going to be recording this game, and then we're going to do a little bit of a debrief afterwards to talk about it. So um, you can watch my perspective of this game here, but I would also link to Tay Ray's video of this game in the description so you should go and check that one out to see how he gets on but of course to see how we're going to get on we've got to jump in here into this game so we are very fortunately going first in our first game online for Oceania so let's take a look at what we've got in our starting hand okay we've got some interesting options we've got a couple of Oceania birds of course I'm going to be looking at those with interest but equally I've got some good Options that we are oh so familiar with. Pipe Green from the base game. Great for doing a bit of card draw. Look at the bonus cards. And we've also got a new Oceania bonus card. So I uh, might have to keep that just purely because of the interest in seeing how it goes. Of course, new bonus cards. Um, got to get used to these. Got to learn um, how they're going to work and uh, see how we get on. So um, Grebe is going to be a must. This Bullfinch as well, I think, actually. Um, with the new Oceania mats, of course, you know, you get that first bird down and you start getting extra food already. And of course, the bullfinch power. I'm getting a bit more food as well. Could be could be handy. So, um, yeah, I'm sort of leaning towards uh, keep the food for those two birds. Maybe play the Grebe, draw some cards, uh, play the bullfinch, get a bit of food. It was like quite an open start. So, yeah, we'll go for the wetland data analyst. Um, it's all about consecutive wingspan. So we start with a fairly small bird here in the Grebe. I think we can look to build up from there, get some other big birds, maybe some bonus card birds later in the game. So, yeah, I think we're going to lock that in. And, um, yeah, like I say, we'll go from there and see how this start develops in the rest of this game. All right, so here we go. It comes around to our first turn. Let's take a look. What hay raids get? Okay, four birds <laughs> and a worm and a nectar. So very aggressive. I like it. He must have some interesting stuff or maybe... He just had a handful of Oceania birds uh, and couldn't resist keeping the lot. So I don't blame him at all for that. Um, but yeah, I think we proceed as planned. We're going to go ahead, um, get this green down. We're going to save. I think we'll save the nectar for now. Um, having that flexibility, perhaps later, depending on what we draw. I think that uh, I think that could could play into our favour here. So. Uh, yeah, of course, with the nectar, you want to spend it. You don't want to be leaving it in your supply all throughout uh, the round and then having it at the end because it gets discarded. So um, we've got a very nice bird from Tayray here, Princess Stephanie's uh, Astrapia, I think is how it's pronounced. Feel free to correct me in the comments. Um, but we're going to be getting some free eggs, so love to see that. Thank you very much, Tayray. Um, and yeah, we're just going to go ahead and start drawing and seeing what we find in each swan. Hello. Um, don't mind if I do. Um, and I think it could be quite an interesting one as well, the Great Hill. I think this double quail will be quite nice for us. Um, I was kind of looking at it while waiting for Terry to pick. And yeah, with this bullfinch, maybe get a bunch of food, play that bird, and we instantly get loads of eggs. Um, that could be really good for setting up, for example, Butte Swan. Um, this Great Hill, I don't think I've played this yet, but um, this could be really good. Potentially getting extra tuck cards um, in this wetland. So one we'll look at for sure um, but yeah I think uh, for now I think that's enough for me to uh, play this bullfinch and start drawing stuff so Terry did pick up the morning dove so he's maybe going all in on uh, on the eggs here uh, but red legged partridge now pops up partridge is such an interesting one in Oceania uh, with all this egg space as well with the, uh, with the bullfinch and everything I think we're just going to draw again um, and I think, at the very least, we block that because um, I think that could be something that Terry looks at as well. Now, um, Grey Butcher Bird, another new one to me. That could be an interesting one to go with. Lots and lots of options here. Um, I think probably Vose Swift is the odd one out. Um, but for sure, we can, uh, yeah, look at getting this bullfinch down, drink some food. Maybe we'll get our hands on that nectar if we're lucky. Or maybe Tay Ray is going to go and grab that before we get a chance. So that's another thing. Um, playing against players. There we go. No messing about. 
Uh, but AI does tend to leave the nectar for you. I don't think skilled players are going to make such mistakes. So, um, okay. How do we want to play this? Do we want to go with this partridge? I still feel like this uh, this stubble quail will be good. And then maybe we look at building um, something out with this mute swan. But at the same time, you know, partridge down, you're getting five eggs a turn. Um, very, very strong. So for sure, bullfinch goes down first of all. And yeah, I uh, I feel like we can just take food maybe two or three times here. And this quail could be a big point play. Lots of eggs get us sorted. Um, of course, Teire is going to be giving us eggs as well with this, uh, I'll just call it Stephanie, so I don't end up mispronouncing it all the time. Um, and that is going to help. So, so yeah, Morning Dove in the forest. Yeah, he's definitely going to be uh, hammering that a little bit, but we'll go ahead, take a bit of food, grab ourselves a nectar, reset the feeder, and okay, we get to take only a seed or a berry, but it is going to be blocking uh, at least one nectar, assuming that Teire goes for food on this next turn. So um, that is going to be nice for sure. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about this end of round goal. Could, of course, play the chickadee if I wanted to build up some kind of forest, but yeah, this, uh, this feels like it could be a good Mute Swan game for me. Um, so yeah, maybe the bonus card goes out the window a little bit. Uh, but Great Teal, uh, I don't have enough experience with this bird to know uh, if it is worth using or not. So um, maybe we'll experiment with it. I think that could be a good play. Um, and then that is at least going to get us three points uh, off the bonus card. So he's gaining food, but the mind games are already in place, not using the Stephanie anymore. Um, so thanks for that, Teire. Uh, but we'll go ahead and grab some more food. We'll reset again. Is he likely to go and grab food again? Or do I leave those two nectars for me? I think I'll leave them, because even if he takes them, uh, I'll be getting a, I'll be getting a reroll. Um, so yeah, I think we I think we take food again, and then we play this quail. And this could be a good way of using up lots of nectar as well, getting lots of nectar spent at once and in that grasslands, because um, discarding is the same as spending. So it will go it will go and count towards the nectar races um, at the end of this game. So got to bear that in mind as well. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think we've got enough to, to build a nice wetlands here, and man, we're going to have some extra cards if we can find ourselves a main duck or a, or a mockingbird or a chiff chat. I'll be very, very happy. So a little busted going down. Um, Terry leaving me the nectar. I don't mind going and grabbing that, and we'll even block um, another one here. So um, yeah, I don't think it massively matters. I guess we'll take a, we'll take a berry just for the variety and yeah I think we I think we play this quail and I think we max it out I think we use all six food to uh, get ourselves some eggs um, that's going to be great for that second end of round as well going forwards uh, really really going to help us out with the tempo as well just getting some more eggs down we can then probably not worry about laying eggs to be honest like I say this partridge would be really nice um in other situations, but I think we focus on the well. And so here we go. We're getting reminded. Um, I'm going to ask not to be reminded because I trust myself to remember. Forest Robin. Okay, very nice forest being built up here. Might be a game of forest versus wetlands. I'm definitely glad I blocked this quail because that would be very, very good, I think, for uh, Tay right here. But let's go ahead and yeah, play this quail. So we use a nectar and then we'll discard three more, and we'll also get rid of berry and a couple of seeds to go with it so there we go 10 points just playing that quail and four nectars in the grasslands definitely strong and yeah like i say um i think we probably do play this great deal i think i'll go for food next round first um and then we could do teal and swan and start drawing and start digging and like i say if we can find more tucking birds that's going to be the dream. That's going to put us in, uh, in a good position. So I think now with uh, the extra X base, I think Tay is going to want to use this uh, this co-op power and, uh, and give out some eggs. But we have got lots of space, so that's where the Grebe and the Bullfinch are definitely going to come into play. So 
Yeah, he's going for food. And this is interesting. Uh, this is an interesting part of the Oceanic expansion again, having to discard the nectar at the end of each round. Um, if your last turn of the round is gaining food, you uh, you can't take nectar because it's just going to disappear. So, um, yeah, definitely something to bear in mind. So we did get the egg there. And uh, yeah, we both missed the end of the round. So what can you do? But definitely a strong position for Tay. He has uh, still got a couple of birds. So interested to see what he's got cooking. He does need some card draw. Um, that is definitely where we are going to be strong. So, um, yeah, like I say, definitely look to get these two down. I might play this Butcher Bird as well. I, uh, like I say, I don't really know uh, what the probability of success on this is. Uh, it feels like it might be quite low because you're looking for small birds, but you get two points each time. Uh, maybe someone needs to make a massive wingspan Oceania edition to, uh, to look at these kind of birds. But until then, we might just have to play it and gamble and uh, find out for ourselves. So more free eggs. Thank you very much, Tayro. And yeah, we'll go and grab um, some food. Maybe we do go up. Maybe do grab a rodent. Aspirational rodent. Um, in case we want to uh, go for this later. And now, I think now we block the block the nectar one. That, I think, works for me. So how small is this bird? It's 40. Okay, if it was 42, I might be more tempted to play it. <laughs> Because then uh, it would be the right size for the bonus card. But uh, yeah, not to be just uh, in the wrong direction. The wrong sort of size kind of bird um, that we are looking for, which yeah is a, is a bit of a shame. But um, could still be an option. So more eggs. Yeah, he is going for food. So good that we can block the nectar while it's there. Maybe, maybe we do go for this butcher bird. I think this could be quite fun. So I'm going to go for food again. Hope for more nectar. Yeah, there we go. And, uh, oh, there we go. Lots of nectar for you there, Tay. Knock yourself out. But I think we can, uh, yeah. Maybe we do just play all three of these. Maybe we go Butcher Bird first, and then Teal, and then Mute Swan, and then we give ourselves the option. I'm not sure how many birds there are bigger than 220 um, that we could play in that final slot. But I think we are going to get at least three points from this. So yeah, play these three. And then uh, then we've got that final slot. Keep that uh, free for that final engine bird that hopefully we find. Something good to go there. Okay, Red Knot. Not a bad play. Not a bad play at all. And he's getting more ground less space. So um, I think he's going to make a push on this end around. But we're going to be strong. Um, these two birds will be able to get some more eggs from the Stephanie so um yeah have we got enough food so we've got was that nine food yeah these cost eight food between them so um let's go ahead we'll play the butcher bird first so we'll do I think we'll do it like that I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference we're going to use some nectar of course um not planning on playing more birds so I want to use all my nectar before the round ends. Um, that third end around might be one that we lose, just given the uh, the forest situation that uh, the Tay is building up. Looking very nice. And yeah, we're going to want to be focusing on drawing cards, I think, rather than, uh, rather than taking food. But we'll see. We will see. Maybe we do find that main duck and we, uh, <laughs> we get ourselves loads of seeds. So uh, that could definitely... Definitely be an interesting option, but um, more free eggs. Don't mind if I do. Actually, we'll put it in the cup nest. Look at that fourth end around. Think ahead to that. Um, so yeah, he's still going food. Still doing the the tuck and draw. I mean, this is so nice. This forest is really good. Um, obviously, three points. You do give me an egg, but you still get three points yourself. Um, I think forest engines are going to be really, really strong with uh, the Oceania expansion. So going to be interesting to see that. Let's play our grey teal. Get that down. Um, so yeah, again, this is another bird I've actually not played. So we're experimenting here with the butcher bird and the teal. This teal, you look at three cards, and if there's a wetland bird, you can add it to your hand or tuck it. So I think if we are drawing uh, wetland birds there, we are going to be tucking those. Because um, we're going to be seeing enough cards between the mute swan and the grebe and everything else. So we probably want to take the tuck. 
but um, yeah, like I say, once this goes down, this is uh, going to be a solid engine, really, 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 really strong position in this wetland. So hopefully, uh, if we can get some good stuff to add to that. And go from there. So white wagtail, we got some teal action going on. Big respect, Teire. Um, so okay, two turns left. He has to draw cards and lay eggs. So that'll be interesting to see how or what he is able to play there. And we're gonna play our mute swan. So I think, yeah, I'm gonna assume that we are gonna get one more egg from somewhere for that final end around. So I want to leave them on the quail just to be sure. Because you never know, he could somehow, some way, um, sneak, uh, <laughs> sneak a win here. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy that uh, loses an end of round goal that he should have very uh, comfortably won. So, um, yeah, this could be fun. I've, uh, I've yet to fully experiment with these teal powers, but I think again in the Ocean expansion, drawing cards is good. You, you know, you, you get that instant development just by playing one or two birds now in uh, in your wetlands. The same for drawing food, so um, taking all the actions here is uh, definitely more uh, more appealing than I think it had been on the baseboard, so we'll see we'll see if Teire can pull off a, uh, a teal masterclass here. So he is drawing, and of course he's going to lay X on that last turn. We are going to draw cards and see what we find. Well, at least Teire did find this, so Galar, one of the best birds in Oceania, great for forest engines, so um, yeah, I might uh, I might keep hold of that, <laughs> just uh, just for the flex, um, so sorry Teire, uh, but okay, Grey Teal, there we go, Rough would be nice actually to keep, um, would be very nice to keep, but I'm going to tuck it the point and butcher bird oh does that count oh no it needs to be less than 40 i thought i thought it was going to count 50 so never mind not meant to be oh, there's a hummingbird okay hummingbird and a cuckoo well definitely get rid of that sparrow it's hummingbird could be uh could be an option i think we're going to keep digging like i say i know there's a main duck somewhere in this deck even a bush tip or a blackbird or you know any sort of tucking bird where i'm getting more than one point. I mean, if I can find a Mockingbird, I'm going to be very, very happy as well. So, there we go. Laying his eggs, we're going to keep drawing, seeing what we find. Um, maybe, maybe something that we look at, but um, yeah, everything else, I think this Hummingbird probably does go, to be honest. And we draw again. <laughs> it's the Wood Dog. <laughs> Another bird they would have liked, so sorry, not sorry. Um, and there we go, another tuck on the grey teal. And there we go, Butcher Bird. It gets a hit. We get a tuck and a cash against tuck and cash. Doesn't get more poetic than that. So I'll take that. That was a, what was that, a six point turn? Super nice to get that in round two. Look at that, already 46 points. And we're going to win this end of round goal as well. So this is good. We're looking in a, we're looking in a good position here. But I've uh, got to say, Teirate with this uh with this teal setup. I wonder if he's got food web expert, just given uh given these birds. But yeah, we'll see what he's able to get down. You can use nectar, of course, with these teal pass. That's another good strength, good flexibility, get a load of nectar. And Pine Siskin goes down, so. Ooh, I see a main duck. Are we going first this round? I think we are. Okay. <laughs> oh, I cannot tell you how good that is. Um sorry, Teiray again. I'm just finding all the birds that you want, um, but also all the birds uh, that I want to. So, um, yeah, I think we're good. Um, we're going to tuck Raven because it's a flex. Um, and that is not going to hit that time. So that is a bit of a shame. Um, but OK. Cool. Um, very nice. Very nice. We definitely want to get this main duck down as soon as possible, if possible. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we're golden. We basically just draw the rest of this game. I think Main Duck will give us a bit of food for the center round. Um, we'll maybe think a bit about what birds we might want to play with some of the seeds that this is going to give us. 
but yeah, we are we're going to be we're going to be in a in a very very strong position, um, no doubt there. So yeah, Tay's going to get a lot of food now in this forest, and that's great when you're running Wagtail. You need lots of food, so three food, and then of course the Siskin getting a tuck and a food. So does need cards. Uh, maybe that Northern Shoveler might be one, or even the Flamingo, to be honest, against my full tuck. Yeah, he does pick up the Flamingo. <laughs> I like it. Um, so, okay, that's uh, that's definitely good for Tay. Um, right, we'll take our egg, we'll put it on the butcher bird. Hmm, okay. Well, we have now got a Great Blue Heron as well. So that would be very nice if he just drew cards again and double played. Uh, Heron into Flamingo. That could be, could be something to watch out for. Um, what I'm also thinking here, I'm going to need to somehow get some nectar spent, perhaps in that uh, in that forest. Um, now it is only two points because I'm definitely going to lose the nectar race there, uh, but it maybe is two points that I want to think about. Um, otherwise, yeah, we just definitely need to get some food to. Uh, get this main duck down so hmm giving him the blue heron is worth points but me drawing without having this main duck down uh, it's also it's me losing points so um, I think here yeah I think we take the two I think we take the two worms just trying to work this out um, I think we take the two worms thinking about maybe hooded warbler maybe yellow billed cuckoo Maybe something else. And then we do get the hit on the bullfinch. So, yeah, we play uh, main duck with the two seeds. We draw cards the rest of this round. We're going to end on five foods. So, I don't know. Maybe take and beat that. He's got some expensive birds to play. He'll also need to draw cards and lay eggs at some point. So, he's not going to be able to take food all the time. So... Maybe we can make a push for the end of round, and even if we don't win it, uh, we're going to make things awkward, hopefully, for him, and uh, yeah, put him in a in a tricky position. So he's going food again. I think I think that great blue heron would be a a very nice pickup to double play into, and just yeah, build out the uh, build out the wetlands. He does pick it up because um, the thing is, in uh, in the Oceania expansion now. You don't necessarily get that instant jump up going from column three to column four. So you know, playing a playing a playing a bird here, you, you, the only thing you unlock is the ability to to chuck food to reset the tray, and that's not really something that people do very often. So you kind of need to double play or play two birds and get yourself those extra cards for sure. If you're tucking with the siskin, extra cards are important. So um, now it's time for main duck to go down. So let's say a couple of seeds on that. Now I think we can get off the quail, um, just in case he doesn't give us another egg uh, for our cup nest. So, yeah, he's uh, probably going to win that last turn around, but say who knows, maybe playing this hooded warbler for six points, and maybe we get an egg on it. Could work out nicely, but yeah, super strong, 57 points. I mean, what is this engine now? It's I mean, it's guaranteed six points here, because we get three and three. This maybe hits, and then this maybe hits as well. I don't know the probabilities, but... You know, we could be maxing out at a nine-point engine, um, which is just so, so strong. And yeah, anywhere between six and nine points to run that for the rest of this game. Definitely, uh, definitely putting ourselves in a good position. So um, there goes the heron into presumably the flamingo, indeed. So yeah, we're just going to play into taste hands and draw cards here. Um, maybe I should think about taking some stuff. Might be good for him, like the says Phoebe and maybe this turtle dove. We'll pick those up. Just so that he doesn't get them. Um, actually, maybe we keep the turtle dove. Double seed. You know, we're going to have lots of seeds. Uh, maybe we keep the Sace Phoebe even. I'm just going to keep everything that uh, was only meant to be a block. Um, but okay. Uh, can't play that anymore. Can't play that anymore. Keeping this would be uh, just for the flex. So um, I think we'll get rid. And yeah, come on. There we go. We get a choice. So we'll get rid of the best one. And come on, Butcher Bird. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so there's our nine point turn. How about that? And we get even more great birds that Tayro would like. So, um, yeah, don't mind blocking these kind of teal powers. Teal plus teal. It's a, it's a good combo. So, he would have liked that. 
Uh, and again, I mean, maybe, maybe we play this. Maybe we play this if we're gonna have extra seeds at the end of the game. This could be a this could be a big option. So we'll see. He's laying eggs. He's gonna wait. He's playing the smart. Draw cards the last turn when I've given him extra tucks, but hey, it's still worth it here for me to draw and get those tucks myself. So um, Cerulean Warbler could be a good one to play. Kind of run out of the things that we might want to play. I think this Cuckoo is not going to go. And yeah, the Galar, again, was was just kept to annoy Tay, so um, we can uh, we can get rid of that. Abbott's Booby, another good one to not let Tay have. He's Nipper Illegal. Would have liked that myself, but never mind. We're getting these hits on the teal and that is the main thing but also getting the hits on the butcher bird so that is very very nice very very nice indeed so three successes i think it might have missed twice so that feels like a feels like a good a good healthy number um, to be working with so okay we're looking good on this end around we've got lots of food like i say tay probably draws cards and then takes food so he will get four more food there but then he has to play something so unless he's playing something for free or that only costs one food then we might be okay but yeah I'm, I'm glad I got this habits booby and not him this is just really really good um, probably potentially one of the strongest bonus card giving birds from Oceania um, yeah just letting you look at three bonus cards so it's very very powerful and especially if the one that you start with uh, is not very good or one that you've picked up is not very good um, you can very very easily get rid of that and replace it with some better one so did he draw cards he did there you go three tucks on the flamenco very nice we are also going to go ahead and draw cards ourselves we're just going to pick up lots of nice bonus card birds um, to choose between so this can go um, hmm. lots of cup nests lots of cup nests probably this Oriole is too expensive um, this says Phoebe would be really nice I'm trying to think almost playing this turtle dove and picking up a nectar and then playing something in the forest uh, with said nectar just to make sure we get those two points that could be quite nice and yeah some of these uh some of these bonus card plays are appealing. I think maybe the Seas Phoebe is a step too far for us, so we'll get rid of that. As nice as it would have been uh, for that last hand around goal. So another success with the teal, and another success <laughs> for the Butcher Bird. Oh, this is uh, this is very quickly going to become one of my favourite birds uh, in this Ocean expansion. If this keeps hitting, I feel like there are many birds like this where you're... Uh, your opinion of them is very, very strongly swayed by um, your early experiences with it. So, um, like I say, good experience so far. This uh, this could be could be one I look to time and time again. I mean, especially it's uh, it's one of those where if you've got omnivore, if you've got rentologist, if you've got falconer, it's uh, it's going to be a pretty good play. So yeah, definitely glad. Definitely glad I kept that. It's worked out pretty well. So. We'll see what Tay's going to do. Like I said, probably be taking food here. So yeah, it puts him on to seven. Not sure if that's before or after the Siskin. Okay, he has got two more than me. He's giving me a free egg. Put it down there. And we'll see. See if he's found a cheap bird worth playing to not lose this uh, this end of round. But yeah, we're looking so strong with 84. <laughs> and it's going to be at least 87 with this end of round. And then we're just going to keep going. So what is the situation? Yeah, he did find something cheap. What did he play? Oh, Grey-Headed Mannequin. I really like this one. This is a really good bird. Um, again, basically uh, letting you play more birds. Kind of works like a double bird, but it's like a delayed double bird. Um, and it's going to help him for that last end of round. So maybe we don't get too distracted by the end of rounds. Um... But yeah, I think for sure, I want to be, uh, I want to be trying to play some of these. I think maybe the the warbler is the safest play. I mean, it's uh, it's going to be six points after the air cost, but two more for the nectar. It's an eight point turn. 
I feel like um, I feel like that could be that could be worth it. But then again, I mean our <laughs> our um, our wetlands is uh, you know maxing out at nine, and it does seem to be reliably hitting at nine. So that's going to be yeah tougher tough decisions tough decisions to make. So got some good beds in the tray as well. Wild turkey, Tay might like that. Grey warbler would be great for me. Um, another potential cup nest to uh, to get an egg on. And yeah, we may be even in that position where if we have enough cup nests down but just not enough eggs, maybe that last turn, just lay eggs. If it uh, if it gets us three points and an end of round goal swing, that's nine points guaranteed. So it might be something to consider. But yeah, I think, um, I think using the turtle dove to pick up a nectar I think that uh, I think that'd be quite good. I think that'd be quite good. And then we can see. I mean, House Sparrow. Maybe we don't play that anymore. Maybe we play one of these. I think we are going to have an extra worm. Yeah, if we use a nectar on the warbler, we're going to have one more worm and a seed. So playing this Cerulean warbler would be very easy. Certainly easier than the than the Cassin's Finch. Uh, okay, he's drawing food again. I think he wants to delay the cards as long as possible. Let me. Um, go ahead and draw and give him some tucks but I think I want to be getting these down earlier um, so yeah I think probably if there is a nectar okay he's going to make us gamble on a reroll is he <laughs> oh no actually I mean he's left the grey warbler so I feel like we have to pick that up actually do you know what we should pick it up with the grebe at the end of the turn oh Australian Raven. Hmm. Maybe we play that instead of the Warbler. With the Nectar. Because that's going to be... If we still have... Even just a couple of extra seeds. We can use those up easily there. So... Okay. We've got some decisions. Like I say, this Cassis Finch, I think that goes. don't think I've got the capacity to play that. Thank you very much, Grey Teal. And thank you very much, <laughs> Grey Butcher Bird. Oh man, this is uh, this is such a good bird. This is going so well. I'm having a great time. So okay, yeah, I I definitely I definitely like the idea of now. Let's work this out. If I play Turtle Dove and draw a Nectar, I could then double play in the forest. I would still have three food left. Which means if I draw cards twice and get those two more seeds, I can cash all of them on the Raven. I feel like that's quite a good play. I feel like that's quite a good play. And the thing is, it's safe using the uh, the Turtle Dove to to reroll because, like, worst case scenario, we still get food and we can uh, we can get this Raven down. Uh, but yeah, Nectar, I think you are pretty likely. You are pretty likely to get it on the reroll, so let's do it. Let's do it now. We're going to gamble. See what the bonus card is. That's also a gamble. Okay, wildlife gardener. <laughs> right, so maybe maybe we scrap the raven plan because now uh, hooded warbler with this cup nest potentially becomes a better play. Um, but we'll see. We're going to reroll. Please, nectar. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, we've got some decisions to make. How is Tay looking on the end of round? He has got four. So okay, I think laying eggs for us probably not going to be worth it. Unless we did all these plays in the forest. So if we played Warbler, Warbler, Warbler. <laughs> Just play Triple Warbler. Um, and then lay eggs, but I'm not sure that's worth it. I don't want to take too many bonus card gambles because I don't think this board is set up for bonus card gambles. Like, I'd be looking for bird counter. That's probably about it. I'm not sure. There are loads of other amazing uh, bonus cards that would work uh, too well here for me. So, yeah, definitely need to play something in the forest. Um, this wildlife garden does does make things more difficult because yeah the warbler would be the warbler would be an easy four points extra but if we are able to max out on these raven caches that's another five so that is better 
uh, that is better. So decisions, decisions, decisions. Not uh, not going to be easy at all, but um, yeah, it's worth trying to work out what he's going to do. So he probably, maybe he draws cards twice here, actually. Maybe that's what he's hoping for, because he's not got loads. Yeah, I think he might be drawing cards now, actually. Um, but he wants to run his forest as much as possible. But I don't know necessarily how much more food he needs. He's already got six, so um, that'll be enough to play whatever you draw, um, whatever you're going to use. Actually, I suppose he's got this mannequin, so he's going to want to play two more birds. He is definitely going to want to play two more birds. And you can always throw food for eggs here, so... Um, if he has a bit of extra food and then takes the egg laying turn and, and discards the food for eggs there, that's not necessarily a bad thing. You're still getting points, so um, certainly better than just laying two eggs on his own. Um, that's kind of lame, so I'm sure he'll try. I'm sure he'll try and do that, but yeah, just kind of uh, gut feel here is that the raven is going to be better, like I so if we draw two more times that's going to put us on going to put us on seven food oh, maybe we're not going to have enough food actually I think maybe now with the double play um, we would end on yeah we'd have seven food drawing twice and then we double play so we've got three on the raven I think um, I think playing this double play is the better option so I mean he has drawn birds there I yeah, I think. Um, I mean, maybe wait. Maybe maybe we get uh, maybe we get another double bird or something. Um, yeah, he's probably not going to draw again. So I think we're safe. Going and drawing, and uh, going later. And there we go. That's the better bird that we found. So that can go in the forest um, instead of the hooded warbler. It's just warblers everywhere. We can't get away from the warblers this game. Um, but we're gonna have to tuck some of them maybe soon. Yeah, I think the raven. As nice as that would have been get more caches. We're just going to keep a handful of warblers here, so... You guys all get tucked. There we go. White Stork, you can also get tucked. Butcher Bird, come on. <laughs> yeah, I need to go back and count how many times this is hit, because I feel like this maybe is overperforming expectations, but I mean, six tucks and six caches. Like I say, if I can take down Tuck and Cash with a Tuck and Cash Bird, I don't think gets much better than that so okay we've got a we've got a clear we've got a clear double play I think warbler into warbler uh, we will draw once more like I say just kind of waiting and seeing uh, maybe maybe we do find another double play like we find a, a red eyed vireo or something we can stick that in at the forest as a part of this so we are comprehensively losing all of these nectar battles um, don't think that's too too big of a surprise, um, to be honest. Um, given the forest engine, I think that's a, a real strength of the, these forest engines in Oceania. It's just winning the nectar races, getting you know, 15 points. If we look at these nectars, you get five each time you win in a habitat. So big points, big points to be going for. Um, he did indeed go food. So he's going to have to lay eggs his last turn and then he'll get his two plays with Wagtail and Anakin. So we draw, easy peasy, gold pinch. Might have been nice uh, earlier on. We can do some tucking. We can do even more tucking. And yeah, last chance is on the teal. There we go. This has hit quite a lot as well. So this has been quite good. And Grey Butcher Bird, come on. Not meant to be. But six, I'll take that. I'll take six for uh, for the whole game. I think that was a pretty, pretty successful bird to be going with, so... Got a nice double play at the end here, so Warbler. Um, you saved the egg, so that's another thing to bear in mind. We are going to get, I think, seven points for this double play, and then four from the Wildlife Garner, so 11 points. 11 points for the last turn of the game, and effectively gaining two on that Nectar, so 13 points. Super nice for us. So he has laid eggs. Can't tell if he discarded much food, but he's surely... These two birds must be what he's planning to play with Wagtail and Vanakin, so... We'll go ahead and do our double play. So we use uh, the Nectar just to make sure we're getting something up there. And then, as I say, we could gamble on the Cerulean, but I think I'll take the safe four points here. Um, I don't feel like the gamble at this point. Probably not going to draw 
um, a great bonus card at this point in the game for us. So over to Tay. We'll see what uh, see what he's got in store. So first of all, he's got this Wagtail. We'll be able to play something with this Nectar, and then he's got the Mannequin as well. So I'm trying to remember what big point birds we did see. I think there might have been a. Uh, there might have been a bold eagle at some point, so maybe that's what he's got in store with some of this food. Um, definitely glad I blocked that Sace Phoebe. I think that would have been a monster play for him um, at the end with either this Whacked Out or the Mannequin. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see what he is going to get down. So Little Penguin, okay, that's what he's using the fish for. Very nice. And I have no idea what he played with the... Uh, with the mannequin. Oh, he's not played it yet, of course. So we do the end of round first. Something I've got to remember. Um, red-backed fairy. What does this do? Lay an egg on each of your birds with star nest. Okay, that's very cool. And I like that. Playing a playing a yellow bird with a yellow bird. Um, big, uh, big respect for that. So yeah, absolutely smashing these nectars. To be fair, quite close in a couple of the habitats. Um, although actually maybe not in the wetlands there. But we could have maybe done something uh, in the grasses. So... Um, here we go into the scores and we're definitely gonna have a good score i feel like tay's gonna have a good score as well because he did set up a very nice engine and he got a lot of birds down um so we'll see on his bonus cards as well 11 not too shabby i think he did do better in the end of rounds yeah just edging those eggs he was definitely much better in uh but of course these tucks and caches are really where our strength comes in so tay's gonna have quite a few he did have the robin and the siskin and the flamingo late on but yeah, just uh, the full Turk Wetlands there. 60 for us. How close is it going to be at the end? It's going to be pretty close and a very high scoring game. 131 to 124. Um, definitely closer than I thought. I thought I had that one very comfortably in the bag, I'll be honest. But um, yeah, well played by Tay. So let's take a look. Oh, mechanical engineer. Very nice. Maybe not so nice on the visionary leader, um, but at least squeaking a few points out of a backyard birder. So yeah, very interesting game. Two very different ways to play and they came within seven points of each other. So um, super, super interesting stuff. So um, yeah, now we're done. We're going to get Tayre back in the room. We're going to have a little debrief and a little chat about this game and uh, see what our final thoughts are. Good game, fun. Good game, good game. Very close. Very high score. I know. Um, I, I was surprised, yeah. honestly. I mean, I, I, was, I was surprised as well. I thought I had it quite comfortably. <laughs> Um, I, I think so too. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> um, but those nectar points, I mean, those can be sneaky at the yeah. end. Um, and you definitely had quite a few tucks. So, um, yeah, super interesting. I mean, like two very different ways of playing. So, like very early on, you set up in the forest um, with uh, with the egg laying birds and then the robin as well. Um, and it was it was so funny because I had the swan pretty early on, and yeah. I was thinking to myself, all right, now we just go digging and we try and find that main duck. Um, yeah. And then the, the present for me in the tray, I think in round three. So <laughs> um, definitely, definitely worked out nicely. And this butcher bird, I mean, I have very little experience I mean, with this, but that, was, that was going crazy. Come on. <laughs> that was hitting It really so make much. a difference here. It really make a difference. It's big. Six hits. Yeah, it's, it's big. I mean, six tucks and six caches. So I'll take it's it. Huge. I'll take it. I think it, it, it definitely did miss. It, I think it missed like last turn and it missed a couple of times before that. But yeah, yeah it was. Uh, it was it was a nice surprise how well that was doing. So um, it really determined the game, though. In this case, <laughs> like if you say basically, so. if you say because so. it's so small, like the margin, like yeah, I also the miss more of the yeah. yeah. Like when you have a, I suppose when you have a normal hunting power and and you miss or or you hit one or two, it's only a couple of points. But like yeah, you look at two or three misses on this, six points, you know, brings it a little bit more closer. So yeah, um, definitely, definitely helped. But yeah, you were. You were doing some fun stuff there. I liked the uh, I liked the fairy wren play at the end with the mannequin. That was very cool. Uh, yeah, the, I, I found it at the very last minute. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. I wasn't so sure about the wagtail, but mm. I would just say, you know, if I'm against that wetland, I gotta do something yeah. different. So I liked it. I liked it. I, I mean, I haven't I haven't had much experience using the teal powers, but I feel like they can be pretty good here with the new boards. Just getting, you know, getting more cards and getting more food. That's what you need really when you're when you're using the wagtail so uh, yeah it was good i think maybe just the the bonus cards like you started off with a great one mechanical engineer but yeah, visionary yeah. leader a backyard <laughs> birder maybe yeah. not maybe not quite what you look to go for so yeah uh, 
yeah, that's was really hoping what, for one of those birds that psycho your bad yeah. bonus card. Oh, I saw a couple of those. Kind of... <laughs> I did. I think I think I had the Abbot's booby, and I maybe I think I saw the the kiwi as well. So yeah, yeah, those yeah. birds would have been would have been pretty strong for you. And I, I saw loads of stuff. Like I saw the wood duck at one point. Um, yeah, I think I saw maybe one, maybe both ravens. I saw the galah. So I was drawing loads of stuff that would have been great for you. Um, just, <laughs> <laughs> just happily tucking yeah. it. So uh, I know that's that's just how it goes sometimes. But. Yeah, but I, I I'm still pretty happy to yeah. see 124. Absolutely, um, absolutely. When when I see your engine, I was like, yeah, I gotta focus on the nectar. <laughs> I gotta focus on the end of round yeah. goals. So I think that kind of bring it close a little. I think so. And like I say, like uh, you know, you think about base game and European expansion. You're always thinking about how can I get the swing on those end of rounds because um, you know one player winning so many of them can be strong and i think it's the same for nectar like you've got a nine point margin on me yeah um and, and that's a real strength of the forest engine so um, yeah def definitely something to watch out for because yeah there wasn't a whole lot i could do i had to uh I had to really sort of squeeze the nectar out where i could at the end uh yeah. just not really gaining any sort of through the engine but um, yeah that's how it goes i do have one question Go so I, I guess I was man duck. Well, was was that like a guarantee play, or you know, could there be like better birds to to play in the fifth spot? Mm. Well, that's what I was trying to work out. So I mean, I definitely had the card draw to support a main duck, and I already had quite a few cards in hand as well. Oh, that's the grieve I forgot. So okay. yeah, I had the grieve at yeah. the end that was uh, that was yeah. drawing me cards. So I think I was All right. That makes sense. yeah. I think it was net zero card draw. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, main duck was what I was hoping for. I mean, if I found like. Mockingbird, if I found Catbird, even like Chiff Chaff, I would have been okay with that. But yeah, Main Duck was good. I think that helped put a little bit of pressure on the third end of round, just by having yeah. a bit more food and then also, you know, doing some of these plays, like the Turtle Dove and then the double play in the forest. I wouldn't have been able to do that without the food that the Main Duck was giving me. So yeah, yeah, um, I, I think it's saved. a good play. It saved a bit of turns. Um, yeah, that maybe I would have spent um, getting food. Yeah. There. There we go. Good game. Very good game. Very yeah. exciting. Very big scores for sure. So yeah. um, we're gonna see a lot of those in Oceania. I think so. <laughs> That's my experience. I think we're gonna have to we're gonna have to readjust the uh, yeah. yeah what we what we consider to be um, strong scores or not. But I mean, yeah, scoring over 100 is always good. Scoring 120, 130, definitely yeah. take that. So yeah. There we go. All right. The game. I think that wraps up the game and you know as i mentioned we both recorded the game so depending on where you're watching this <laughs> you might want to head over to the other channel and Absolutely. check out you know the game from the other perspective two very different game here so it should be fun yeah yeah definitely if you're a tucking fan you want to watch my video if you're a, <laughs> if you're a forest fan you want to go and watch um Tay's video so do make sure you watch both um but yeah thank you for watching and uh do stick around because we're both going to have plenty more Oceania content coming very soon yeah and you are going to want to see that so um, yeah hopefully see you in one of those videos again very soon yeah see ya